so it took me a lot of time i practice uh, to build the accuracy in sentence correction uh, because it's a section where i was least confident so during a mock i was spending a lot more time on sentence correction even after spending so much time i was getting them incorrect uh, but other four sections thankfully were taking care of them i think the skills from cat were transferred to there to some extent uh, so i had to focus most on sc but after some time i started solving a few questions and uh, i took like i used to solve like 10 questions daily but i used to focus extremely on writing why every option is wrong and why this one is correct not just why this is correct but why i are why am i eliminating the other options and that's when i think the easy my process the rules that i discussed you have throughout the course started to build upon me that they, they became mechanical to me hi aman and welcome to this very very interesting session uh, congratulations by the way on scoring a 98th percentile score and a 750 thank you so much the ninja pleasure to be here yeah i think uh, the pleasure is mine because um, you've i think the very first email that you ever got from the strategy team was from me right and it's it's nice to be taking your interview after quite some time so uh, i'm going to take me through your journey your uh, end to end and uh, i would love to hear about you know where you're coming from and how you landed up with the gman right till last year i was a cat aspirant so the indian gmat we can say or the indian entrance exam for the mba colleges so i prepared for cat till last year and i couldn't land into the colleges that i was focusing on uh, but that actually built my base for the gmat to, to quite an extent and post that i remember when cat 2020 didn't work out i was quite new to gmat i didn't know how this entire thing works so i tumbled upon e gmat and read fantastic reviews about it on gmat club and then i wrote an email that i need someone to guide me okay what is this exam actually and what well, about how my chances to get into a good college yeah so someone from your team connected with me and they took me through the entire process and after that they asked me to take a mock so initially i scored a 600 in the sigma max mock and a 690 in the official mock uh, then i uh, enrolled with the eg mat and started with sentence correction because till the time i realized that sentence correction is something which is completely new to me. and i was fairly terrible at uh, sentence correction uh because there was no grammar involved during the cat, cat preparation so uh, i started with that i focused on it a lot and i went through the entire course but i wasn't really able to you know grasp the process why this three step process is working out i was mm-hmm. failing to apply it while solving the questions right uh, so it took me a lot of time i practice uh to build the accuracy in sentence correction uh, because it's a section where i was least confident so during a mock i was spending a lot more time on sentence correction even after spending so much time i was getting them incorrect uh, but other four sections thankfully were taking care of them i think the skills from cat were transferred to there to some extent uh, so i had to focus most on sc but after some time i started solving a few questions and uh, i took like I used to solve like ten questions daily, but I used to focus extremely on writing why every option is wrong and why this one is correct, not just why this is correct, but why I am why am I eliminating the other options? And that's when I think the easy my process, the rules that I discussed throughout the course started to build upon me. That they, they became mechanical to me. Okay, this is how I need to do. Uh, so that's how it happened. And after some time. for practice i relied only on og like officially there are four books right so yeah the one the main og then the two verbal review and quantitative review and there is one called advanced question yeah. the 300 yeah. questions booklet so that book as well so i solved all four of them completely mm. and i i only relied on official mocks as well so uh, in my second third and fourth mock i scored 760 consistently uh, mm. it was same split q50 b42 mm. and then i booked my exam and uh, after booking that i remember in my last two mocks the two weeks before the exam i scored a 710 uh, that got me really panic you okay why is this happening so close to exam i was performing well till now and mm-hmm. then just four days before the exam i scored a 700 so that got me into the panic mode but uh, thankfully it worked out on the day of the test so i scored a q50 and a v40 and a 750 
got it so i think yeah. there's one thing that i of course want to talk about here is that you scored a 700 and a 710 on your last two official mocks how did you kind of bounce back from that mindset that i know that my score is kind of dropped down and then how did you go into the exam with a positive mindset that listen i know i can do well let me just go and give this my best shot so i analyzed those exams in detail and there was one common mistake that happened in both the exams and it was quite i'm happy that those mistakes happened because i was really careful for those on the day of test okay. so whenever i used to solve the quant section i always had like 8 to 9 minutes to spare when my section all my questions were done so they were always 8 to 9 minutes left but that was not the case with the verbal section and in both the those tests where i scored a 700 and 710 there was one question that i left unattended and last two three questions were incorrect got so the pattern in both the test so i made sure on the day of test i am going to manage the time very efficiently so i drew a table on the pad okay this much time then i have to be done by these questions i won't stick because it was habitual for me to stick in the sc questions generally if you read about people's experience uh they tend to spend more time in a critical reasoning question or an rc but yeah. that was not really a problem for me i was fairly efficient through those but for a sentence correction question i was taking a lot more time because i wasn't still i knew that this somehow is my weak area got it but on the day of test i was able to manage that time and i think it's only the time management which uh, saved me on the day of test uh, so that's how it worked out so i was pretty sure that it's not my skills it's not something that i have to study in 3 4 days or in a week yeah it's just on the day of test i need to manage time efficiently i don't need to miss any question because that's the penalty which is very high just mm. marking a question incorrect i think the biggest takeaway for me here aman is that you actually sat with those tests and didn't say and did not i would say uh weren't in denial of the fact that something went wrong you actually sat with them try to understand what went wrong and this is something a lot of people don't usually do when when they don't do well right and especially when they do well as well so so i think that's that's a big take away here but let's uh, let's try back to the fact that you know you did a sc course once and then you came back to it again and this happens with a lot of our students and there's this very common thing that listen i'm following your approach but it's taking me more than 2 minutes i'm following your approach it's taking me more than 2 minutes and i am not getting the question right how did you kind of conquer this uh, and and how did you kind of use the course again to kind of uh, improve your sc so one thing was clear that i am missing out on rules like proper grammar rules so i uh, even after going through the course making notes and proper uh, going through the detailed solutions for each and every question mm. somehow subconsciously i was relying on okay this looks okay this must be right because sound this look, feels right this look yeah. feels right and let me give you a very uh, subtle example for that that uh, sc course like that was a moment for epiphany for me that okay how much wrong i am so there was a phase i was going through the course at uh there was a lesson where i was told that like you cannot use like to present example yeah. and in my colloquial language i always use just like okay just like this just like so this is something kind of a epiphany that hit me okay i am i can't rely on this this looks great and never any question does it work out for me that way that this looks fine so mm. that's when i went to the course again and very very carefully wrote down each and every rule which is there which are the exceptions and and to be honest i had to pick up a grammar book as well like a ren and martin as well to go through some of the concept because i forgot everything uh, what is a gerund what is a subjunctive verb yeah. so i went through all of these because i one thing good and one thing bad like the same thing was that i only had to work on one section the sentence yeah. correction was the one that was challenging other were taking care of themselves so i was not very worried about them got it so that's how i worked out I think that's there's a lot of learning there and you you spend a lot of time on this and then you just practiced very few questions but dedicatedly to understand where you were going wrong so big big takeaways there 
Now, the next thing is transferable skills of a cat taker going into GMAT, right? So, of course, people who give the cat are actually fairly good with quant. And if you do well on, on cat with quant, you can you can do well with uh, GMAT as well, even though the format is slightly different, right? Same thing with CR and RC to an extent. Now, I want you to talk about the transferable skills for quant specifically. And I know that you've done portions of the number properties, the word problems, the advanced topics, algebra and geometry, quant 2.0 course. So, as a cat test taker like what do you think really helped you or what do you think can help someone else uh, in in the course to score well uh, on gmat quant right so for that i think in the starting we need to difference between the quant of both the exams in cat uh, there were few sections i never touched for example probability pnc coordinate geometry so these are sections either one question will come or no question will come. And even yeah. if the question comes, I can just skip it. So I can focus on my strong areas, algebra. Mm. But that's not the case with GMAT. There will be questions from these sections and you need to work them out, right? Because you can't skip any question. Yeah. So this is one big difference. Another big difference between both the exams is there are no data substitution equations in CAT. So in CAT, if you are able to satisfy just one case, one option in the, you are able to fit that in the question equation, you're done, you can skip. But this is not the case with GMAT. Until unless you consider all the cases, even one possibility, okay, there might be a negative integer, there might not be an integer at all, yeah. any kind of thing, uh, you won't get that data, data substitution equation, right? So these are the two major differences. Uh, Based on that, you need to shift from CAT to GMAT. So initially, my thought process was, okay, just quickly print through the question. Don't, don't pick pen and pencil. Just see, okay, which options fit and mm. mark. So the, the problem solving questions were working out great this way. But the data sufficiency question were all going wrong using this. Because there I need to work on a totally different approach. I need to fail those cases. Yeah. So it took me some time to build on that. Okay, I need to consider all the cases. So... I followed strategy during the entire box and uh, the entire exam that if there is a problem solving question, I am very quick with it. I will do uh, a quick analysis and see which options fit and I will mark it and move ahead. Got it. And then when there is a data substitution question, I used to spend double the time than, um, than I would spend within a data problem solving question. Mm -hmm. So sit there completely, focus on all the cases which is possible. So that's how I managed it. Got it. I was very surprised to see that you actually did part of the quant basics course, which has the data sufficiency, those, those files about data sufficiency. And I was like, if this guy is doing it, this is the course must actually be good. So tell me the course is actually, it's built for pretty much all GMAT test takers. How were you able to take value from it? And what do you think it can actually offer to someone else? Right. For example, if you're not a, previously CAT aspirant or you have not prepared for CAT, then the course is built in a way that even if you have left quant a long time back, yeah. like in your school or college, it will take you from very basic to the most advanced level. So it it's a complete coverage for the entire thing. So for a person who is not really aware of the concepts or have forgotten those things will be uh, very helped by these concepts, like these files in the starting. For a CAT aspirant, the data sufficiency file are extremely important because uh, even in the starting, there is a proper tree which is followed, right? Yeah. That if you got the option A correct, then you go to these other, these three options are automatically right. eliminated. Yeah. So one thing I also made a uh, used to make a mistake in data sufficiency was I didn't use to check statement B. If the statement A is correct, then just mark it. And this is quite a silly mistake to True. do, right? True. <laughs> yeah. And when I went through that entire course, so I carefully followed that tree everywhere. Okay, if this option is uh, selected, then I need to consider this condition as well. So these things are very helpful because these are nothing, uh, nowhere in chat. Like there are direct problem solving questions there. Another thing is like I said, I made a, I skipped few topics during my chat yeah. preparation. For example, PNC and probability. These advanced kind of topics, a coordinate geometry. Mm. So I covered these topics from the course as well. And if you go through an entire a CAD book, like there are a few dedicated famous yeah. books for CAD preparation, these topics will cover completely the top uh, these sections. But they are either quite advanced, which is not required for GMAT, or won't cover specific GMAT related uh, skills that are needed. 
so that's why i covered those from the, the eg mat course and it was very very helpful or one thing for example standard deviation questions which is something i saw first time in uh, gmat and yeah. in cat they will literally never appear True. which is uh, which is a new thing for me so how standard deviation question works so the, these all things these minute things i needed to do i i needed to find them them to stick to stay at a q50 so that's when i I went through the course and picked out few selected files that are relevant to me. Got it. I think you prepared very, very well. And I mean, I think this is where you need to, you know, whomsoever is going to watch this, you must uh, tell me what are the things that you kept in mind throughout your entire prep because uh, you switched a job in between, you got COVID in between, then you, you know, it's it's been a long journey, right? What are your yeah. takeaways for a student who who wants to do well, who's probably taken the cat before and wants to do well on the GMAT? right so the entire system i would say the ecosystem for cat is that you practice tons of questions like i remember i had around 40 plus mocks during my cat 2020 preparation and 70 to 80 sectionals like i used to write a sectional daily and thousands of questions like whichever coach yeah. you will join they will prepare they will provide their own material there is no standardized material for cat so whichever coaching you are joining they will provide their own material it's like hundreds of questions for one topic and at the end of the preparation you will be done with thousands of questions so we don't really focus on why this is incorrect like if a quant question i got incorrect i'll just check the solution and move away so that's how the entire system works and this is something which you don't you don't want to do here in gmat there's a standardized material just stick to it because if you follow i don't i actually didn't follow any of the materials so i don't know what's the quality of those like there are various pdfs that are floating yeah. around in the market from this teacher from this teacher they might be good but you should first stick with the official material so that's actually worked out for me so i bought those four books and i stuck stuck with them and every question i did it very carefully for example when you go to the last book which is the advanced question i remember seeing few questions in my test which are like exactly same on the structurally they were exactly same okay this is how the quadratic equation is formed and that's what you need to do so that will be really helpful and treat every question like you are going through a course okay if you see a new thing okay you keep, you need to keep in mind what the concept you are get, taking away from it so i i used to keep a diary small diary where i used to write any new concept that i tumble upon for example just to give you a very slight example in my mock there was one question where you need to find out the terminating fraction mm. and in cat it's very simple there's a calculator but in gmat yeah. there's no calculator yeah. then i went to i marked that question incorrectly because it was taking so much time for me to solve mm. but then i went to gmat club to find out the solution and i tumbled upon a new concept okay it's, this is the power of 2 uh, two power and 5 power then only it will yeah. work so i wrote yeah. that down in my diary so i had a few concepts written down back then and i kept on revising them so that's how it worked out for me got it i think my biggest takeaway from what you have said is treat every question like you're going through a course i think that's a very very loaded statement because not a lot of people understand that each question is new in itself and you can create 10 15 different variations of the same question uh so yeah very very well said congratulations again aman i'm so so happy for you and all the best for your applications thanks so much teacher